When I was 19 years old, I had a wisdom tooth extracted. Over the next couple of days, I developed a systemic infection that almost killed me. My head was the size of a basketball, and my neck was so swollen I had to have a tracheostomy just so that I could breathe. And I still have a scar here on my chin where the surgeons tried to drain that infection. My parents were uh, absolutely terrified. And then my doctor told them about a clinical trial that could potentially save my life. It had some scary side effects, but they decided to enroll me. It was for an anti-infective from Eli Lilly, actually a first-generation cephalosporin. And literally a week after that procedure, uh, I walked out of the hospital. So as CEO of Covance, I have a vested interest in the future of, of health care. But as a human being, I'm indebted to it. Um, I'm, I was literally a patient waiting at the end of the tunnel. So it's personal for me and it's personal for Covance employees around the world who work every day to help, to help develop new medicines that may help a, a parent, a sibling, or a friend. And I'm sure it's personal for many of you here in the room today. You know, we have the talent, we have the technology, and we have the opportunity. Diseases such as cancer or Alzheimer's or diseases that don't uh, uh, respond to a standard treatment. The challenge is that the drug development tunnel is just too long and it's becoming prohibitively expensive. Incremental improvements aren't going to cut it. We need drug development that is faster, cheaper, and smarter. We need to rethink drug development. Today, contract research organizations play an important role uh, in the solution. After all, CROs have played a role in all of the top-selling medications around the world. In fact, Covance played a role in 32 of the 39 medications approved by the FDA last year. The CRO R&D footprint now exceeds that of the largest pharmaceutical companies. So development is our core business. We don't manufacture, we don't market. We do regulated science fast and efficiently. So imagine this for a minute. A pharmaceutical company, instead of having 10,000 R&D employees, what if they only had 2,000? They could hand select the best and most innovative scientists and drug development professionals to lead the charge. They would have a keen knowledge of global regulatory issues, uh, insight into innovative study designs, comparative effectiveness, and products that could be in license for development. And then they would be supported by uh, a highly talented layer of project managers and, and contract researchers who possess deep and varied uh, therapeutic expertise. This type of structure would make drug development cost dramatically lower and more variable. And this paradigm is not only possible, it's an industry imperative. Over the last 10 years, CROs have developed a significant amount of valuable drug development data. Covance alone has significant insights into 40% of all the clinical trials conducted around the world, industry-sponsored clinical trials. These data help us identify the best performing clinical trial investigator sites. And you, when you consider the fact that 50% uh, of all clinical investigator sites who sign up to participate in a trial recruit zero or one patient at a cost of $50,000 per site to set them up. Poor site selection is an incredibly expensive proposition. Beyond this example, I think we can reduce total R&D costs by 35% or more and get drugs to patients faster. But realizing this level of savings is going to require visionary leadership, new partnership models, and some calculated risk taking. Moving beyond cost, how do we do all of this smarter? One answer is, to, is drug development that's more patient-centric. This means uh, developing drugs that may only service one segment of the population, but deliver dramatically better results. And fortunately, technology can help us with this personalized medicine, including the use of uh, genomic signatures or biomarkers, which become companion diagnostics that allow 
us to target a specific drug that will work for a specific treatment uh, uh, patient. And also, mobile technology now allows us to facilitate real-time collection of patient-reported outcome data. So this next generation of R&D can create exciting opportunities for manufacturers, CROs, regulators, payers, and ultimately patients. But getting to this better place is going to require big, big changes, not just a warmed over version of status quo. So I'd like to close with another personal story. 25 years ago, I was diagnosed with a Clark Level 3 malignant melanoma. And doctors told me I had an 80% chance of dying within the next six months. I had choices to make. I could go on a clinical trial, chemotherapy, or radiation. And luckily, I chose a surgical procedure that worked for me. But I had no way of knowing that at the time, nor would what worked for me maybe work for someone else. I'm optimistic that there's going to be less guesswork for patients in the future. They will benefit from faster, cheaper, and smarter drug development. And hopefully, they won't be waiting at the end of the tunnel. They will be the guiding light for all of us. Thank you.